Now, sir, what, uh, what training have you had in domestic violence? Um, the training that every recruit gets coming through the academy as a police officer. Um, and then my experience on the streets. Okay, and what, what, is, what is the training that, that police officers receive? That I believe it's a week long. It might, might even been two weeks long. Um, there's just different classes they put us through, types of situations we might encounter, um, different options that we can provide people for help, and their avenues to prosecute. Okay, can you, can you tell me just something about that training? Like, is it, is it to be careful, or is it to educate the, the person that you're going to visit, or is it to, to, to like, discern that it's actually domestic? I just don't know what that involves. Uh, I mean, it, it involves trying to resolve the situation and also trying to, you know, see if there's further things that we need to know about that maybe they're not telling us. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is, is, is domestic more different than, let's say, shoplifting, theft, burglary, something like that? I mean, was there more training specifically towards domestic violence? I can't say there was any more or less. I mean, I think every crime is different in nature in itself. Do you remember a two-week course for theft or anything like that? Or, um, or two weeks commonly time? discussed. I, I can't say a two-week course, no. Okay. And how long was the academy? Uh, mine was 30, approximately 32 weeks. Okay. Um, you know, do you remember anything about, about if you're on the street, what they warned you, or did they tell you like, how it should be controlled as a beat um, officer? How to... Try to resolve a domestic or approach the domestic. Is there was there anything that they went over? I'm not asking to reach far back. We're talking 2008, I guess. When you yeah, I mean, trying to resolve in a peaceful manner. I mean, that was uh, obviously as a patrol officer, our goal is to calm the situation and and figure out at the same time if there's any laws that have been broken and um, try to help the victims with that. Okay. Anything about um, yes, a, a present danger in the domestic, possibly anything that we. Like heighten your uh, ability to, to see what's going on at the scene, uh, make sure everyone's in front of you, anything like that. I mean, was there I mean, we're obviously on every run. We're monitoring people's demeanor and you know, seeing if there's something more to it than, than what we what they're telling us. Okay. I'm not sure I understand your question. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I get, if someone called and said, "Yeah, a, a young kid. It looks like they hit my car with a rock." Can you show up? And you know, you're like, come here. And you're like, what's going on? As opposed to, yeah, a guy's beating me up or something like, where do you go to that scene? And how do you, how do you differentiate? How do you behave? And do you call for backup? I mean, there are all those things involved. I just don't know anything about that. Yeah, I mean, a domestic violence run is going to be dispatched with two officers. You go with two officers? Yes. And on different cars? Yes. Most of the time it's different. Sometimes officers might ride together. Most of the time it's individual officers in a car. Okay, and so. it's a two officer run. So there's a, it's a two officer run, and that's not every run? Not every run, but a lot of them are. Okay, but that's for sure. You go there with two. Yes, the domestic that. violence is two officers. Okay. Um, did you ever find that you said, other than your experience on the street, was it always best to have two officers there? Yes, I think that's the case in a lot of runs. Have you had, have you run into problems with where they're just absolutely belligerent and won't won't leave them alone? You have to take them down. Yes, that's happened. Yes. Okay. Does it happen a lot on domestics? Or? Um, it's a lot of domestics are more verbal um, than anything else, but as far as the ones that get physical, you know, it, it almost always results in somebody if they're still on scene being incarcerated for that domestic. Um, I have no questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Detective, when you arrived on scene, were you responding to a domestic violence call? No, it was a shooting. And so when you arrived, there were already two victims in there. I understand that one victim was transported out. But when you got there, two people had four bullets in them already. I'm assuming I didn't. I was more of a, trying to figure out what was going on and interview people. I didn't actually look at who had what. You, you didn't respond to a scene with two people yelling at each other? No, I did not respond to a shooting. Nothing further. Any recross, Ms. Erskine? No. Mr. McLeod? You're excused, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Your next witness? Yes, Your Honor. The Commonwealth calls John Pickard. Is it Pickard? P I C K A R D. Pickard. Thank yes. you.
Are you Mr. Pickard? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. If you'll come all the way up uh, to the witness chair, and I'll place you under oath. Watch your step. Yeah, if you have a seat, thank you. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, if you'll scoot up because the mic is on this. You may ask. Please introduce yourself to the jury. I'm John Pickard. Okay. And Mr. Pickard, how are you employed? I'm employed by CTR Incorporated. Okay, tell us a little bit more about your employer. We own uh, property, uh, apartments, warehouses, clubs. Okay. Um, do you own a property or does your employer own a property at 1133 South Shelby Street? Yes, we do. And were you in charge of cleaning out the apartments inside of 1133 South Shelby Street in June of 2016? Yes, I was. Okay. And did you discover some evidence that you thought was relevant to the murder investigation? Yes, well, I had my guys removing the carpet and cleaning the mess up. We had a scraper, and we scraped the floor, and there was a bullet in the floor. And it was, that's where the big pile of blood was. Are you talking about apartment number one? The first apartment when you go in the building, yes. Okay, first apartment when you go into the building. And you said that your guys had torn the carpet out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you tear the carpet out of the whole apartment? Yes. Okay. Replace it all. Okay. Including the bedroom? The bedroom was the main one we started on. Okay. Why is that? It was where all, most of the blood was. Okay. And was the blood, did the blood seep through the carpet? All the way to the subfloor. All the way into the subfloor. Um, when did you, do you remember when you took the carpet out? Uh, it was, the um, I think the following Tuesday. Okay. Um, so was this a several, was this a process over a several days? Yes, it was. Okay. And when you finally went in and you were scraping the floor, was it you that was <coughs> scraping the floor? No, I was in a room when he was doing it. Okay. Who was with you? Mike Daniels. Okay. Um, so Mr. Daniels was scraping the floor, and what happened? Well, we had a coagulated blood there, and he, we poured some bleach and ammonia on it, and he was taking a little scraper and scraping it up in a pile so he could get rid of it. And it sounded like he hit a nail. And he looked down, and he done it again, the bullet rolled out. Okay. Um, was it pretty deep in there? Sounds like you all were scraping for a while. Uh, no, it's, it had about an eighth and after the bullet took up, but that scraper was sharp, and when he hit it, it just pulled it all up. Did either one of you all move the bullet? No, we let the landlord with the bell. Okay. Um, did you touch it? No. Okay. And did you contact the police? Yes, I did. Okay. And why did you contact the police? Because I knew the someone got killed there. Okay. Um, did you go back the following day with the police officer? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you take them to the bullet? Yes. Okay. Um, did you ever go inside of apartment number two, the second apartment in that yes, building? Yes, we did. Okay, what did you do in there? Well, with the, wasn't nobody there and behind on the rent, and uh, I opened the doors for the police when they come there. And we had to kick the door in. Okay. We had no key for it. Um, what was inside of apartment number two? Did okay. you find anything that you thought was relevant to the murder investigation? Just part of a shampooer that was sent on the cabinet, and the rest of it was in the other apartment. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about that. When you say a shampooer, what do you mean? Carpet shampooer. Okay. So one of those vacuums that you clean your carpets yes. with. Okay. Um, what was suspicious about that? It had a bullet hole in it. Okay. Um, in which part of the shampooer? The one that holds the water where you dump the, uh, put the clean water in, it was in that one. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure the jury understands where everything was. Where was the actual vacuum? In apartment one. In apartment number one. Okay. Where was um, the little tank that holds the water with the bullet hole? In through apartment it? two. In apartment two. Okay. And that stood out to you as something that the police should probably know. Yes. Okay. Um, did you find items of clothing inside of apartment number two? There were clothing in there, yes. Okay. Some, there wasn't a whole lot there left. Okay. Um, was there anything else inside of apartment number two that that kind of sparked your interest that you thought the police should look at? The board of owner, I'm sure she had a court date the next day or something. Okay. 
What about um, the potential blood on the chair? Uh, I wasn't sure if that was blood or not. No, we approach. Yes. 